Amen. Amen. The same to me. The same, the same love, the same God, the same Jesus. Yes. Amen, my brother. Amen. Amen. So, uh, when I was preparing for this message, I was telling God for about a month, a month and a half, Ask, tell me, like, what, what do you want me to speak on? What do you want me to do? And he would not say anything to me, so I would not do anything. At the same time, like, I, would, I, would, I would always be on the lookout. You know, I never just, you know, I said, oh, I'm gonna come down. No, I was always obedient, and and, 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 and I was aware of what was happening. So he gave me little things here and there, and usually it was not things that that it was it was for you. <laughs> It was things that it was for me. Yeah. And at the same time, I was using you guys to tell me things about things that were going on. And it was just happening back to back to back to back to back. So this sermon that I wrote is really not mine. It's really, it's really for me. Uh, I'm just going to share with you and bless you. That's awesome. But I think you're missing out because I'm, I already got the good one. But at the same time, um, I realized that, that this, this topic is very high in Christianity. It's very high on a lot of my friends, uh, you know? So it's very important for me to share this message. And, and what, one of the things that God said to me was that, I don't want you to share from a place where you're not. I want you to share from a place that you are. Amen. So that, that's, that's how I, I, I'm, I'm just here to share my heart. Amen. And this is how, I'm a broken individual. God is still restoring my heart. Amen. And I'm just here being obedient and being just truthful with you. So uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, that Jesus. we are here, that we are here only because of you. We are here because you love us so much, Lord, that you decided today, Lord, to give us a breath of life yes, Father. so that we can become more like your Jesus. Yes, Lord. We can become more like your character, more through your Holy Spirit. Just be able to live in love, to live freely. So as we are here, Father God, I ask for your anointing, Lord. I pray, Father God, for the hearts, the minds, Lord, and the bodies of these people right here, Lord, or my brothers, all your children, Father. I pray, Father God, that you will speak through us, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will move through every aisle, Lord, Amen. and stop in the mighty, beautiful, and amazing face of your child, Lord, and look him straight in the face and say, I am here for you. Amen. This is no coincidence that you're here. You think you're here for the first time? Well, I've been here for the, since you were born. And today, I want you to listen to me. So I pray, Father God, that as we are here, Lord, that we all pay attention, Lord, and that we all are just exclusively allowing your Holy Spirit to dwell in this place and in our hearts, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So first of all, um, one of the things that have been happening in, 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 my, in my walk is my theology. So my theology, I have, I have very, very uh, solid theology, but at the same time, because I never stop studying, my theology never stays stagnant. Yeah, Continuous, yeah. Continuously got short things in scripture that I read, and I'm like, what the, that? <laughs> wait, wait, let me go back to that one? How come I, I ever saw that one? And little by little, he's been showing me little things in scripture that Amen. just, just highlighted to me now. And I realized it's because that everything that, I've been, that it was being highlighted was a message. And back then, I was not getting it until you started talking to me. I started talking to you, and then... Why would he say that to me? And then later on I'm reading and I'm like, wait, this is what he said. This is actually his exact word. That's crazy. So I would just put it, okay, put it on my board. Okay, then you're talking. Okay, good. Then, and then I talk to another one of you and you would give me more stuff, and more stuff, and more stuff. So all I did is I write, I write down your story in mind. So this is what it came out. So the first thing is that he wanted me to talk about is um, the beginning of what community is about. And John shared a little bit about the fellowship and why we come here. We come here for the community, we come here for the fellowship. But at the same time, I believe that it's because we are so ingrained to our core with community because God himself is a community. Amen. Amen. So in the beginning, one of the things Amen. that just <laughs> rocked me was that I always thought in the theology that everything went bad in Genesis 3. After Adam and Eve are tempted... And then they eat the fruit, right? right? But then I ran into something that is there, that's always been there, and never put attention to it. And it caught my eye, and from there I was like, wow, this is amazing. So the first thing is that um, in Genesis, well, it's 2.18. Yeah. Genesis 2.18, this is, remember, this is before the fall, okay? 
God says, who does everything good, who does everything perfect, he says, it is not good for men to be alone. That's right. That's right. And I paused there. I was like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean it's not good? Everything you do is good. What are you talking about it's not good? Of course it's good. So if he says it's not good, then it must not be good. Amen. Right? Yeah. So how am I arguing with the creator that makes things good or bad? If he says it's not good, then it's not good. But why is it not good? Nothing has happened. Adam is in sin. This is outside of Adam. So why is it that it's not good? And this is one of the things that he says. It is not good for men to be alone. Amen. So I stopped there and I was like, he's not alone. He's with you, Lord. He's not alone, right? He's with Jesus. He's not alone. How many times have I been there? We're like, no, I'm good. I'll just be you, you God. We're good to go. Right here, I read this. I'm like, <coughs> the one that has this connection with me, the one that has this relation with me, is telling me that it's not good for me to be alone. Just with him. And from the beginning, he originally put community there. Why? Because he's a community guy. Amen. But at the same time, when I look at that, what's the first thing that he created? He created... All the animals, he created all the plants, mm-hmm. and then he created men, right? Yeah. And he created them in pairs. That's another thing that I didn't see. I mean, I see, I read it, but I never figured out why was God creating everything in pairs. Quite okay, well, because he wanted everything to be in community. And we're going to learn today, perhaps for the first time, how much that is so important all throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. So again, it is not good for men to be alone. So if God says it's not good, something's wrong. So that made me stop. But the important part is that everything was perfect though. Even though something was not good. For he wants for you and me to grow in community with him. He gave us the power and the authority to create life. He gave us the power and the authority to gather with a bunch of believers <laughs> together to form fellowship so that we would grow, right? It's always, there's always this growth happening in Scripture. But again, it's the same aspect of community. Why is it so important for community? Because community equals family. This is what is intended for the church from way from the beginning. We, we hear community, and we hear, yes, a group of people, but when you hear family, oh, this is my family. Yeah, we're, we're a group, but this is my family. Well, that's not the intention of Christ. The intention of Christ from the beginning is that, no, 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 we're a family. Amen. You know when they say I'm the body? It's because Amen. this is one. We're, it's not that the, my body's over there and then my body, no, we're all one body. Amen. This, is, this is what we what was created from the beginning. So if he says, in everything plural, when it comes up to his creatures, but what about Adam? God said it's not good. He's not saying that Adam is not good. Pay attention to that. He's saying that Adam and Adam alone is not good. Okay, so you've got to be very, very clear on that. So it says that God creates Eve out of Adam. But then he gives them a task together. In Genesis 1.28, it says that God blessed them. And he says to them, be fruitful and multiply. Right? What is it talking about already? Right there, right there, right in the spot. It's talking about community, it's talking about family, but at the same time it's talking about growth. Right? Because he's giving that authority. So he says, before, why do I want you to grow up in community? It's because that's a blessing. <coughs> Sometimes we, this is the part that I jumped. It says, God blessed them. And then he says, be fruitful and multiply. This is the blessing. The blessing is that you're going to have more. This is going to be awesome. And not only that, you're going to have more of your stuff, but you're going to have more of yourself with me. It's going to be awesome. That's always been the encouragement from the Lord. God bless them. So let's see what other mentions of community or patterns. In Genesis 9-1, God blesses them, Noah and his sons, after the flood. And he uses the exact same words. He says that the Lord bless them. He says, be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the earth. Again, it's talking about community. Amen. So important. In Genesis 7-2, the animals, he tells uh, uh, Noah, grab seven pairs of every kind, but he's very specific on which pairs. He says, male and female. Amen. Why is that so important? Because the creation from the beginning is that if you put a male and a female, they're going to create more. Amen. Right? Yeah. So it's very specific. Of, there's community in animals too. 
In Deuteronomy 7 and 6, it says that uh, he also grafts uh, his chosen people. And in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, it says that you are my holy people. God has chosen you out of all the people, and you are his treasure. God chooses a nation. God chooses a community. He didn't just choose one person. He chose a community to carry on his message and carry on his beautiful community. So why is community so important? Again, because God himself is community. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're always uplifting one another. This is my son who I am well pleased, says the Father. Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God is good. And Jesus says, it's better if I leave, for the Holy Spirit will come. They're always Amen. uplifting one another. Always. Why is that so important? Because when you live in community, this is how you live. This is what you do. It's from your core. Always uplifting one another. Again, because community equals family. Amen. So Jesus came to reunite community. Let's look at the New Testament in community. God sends two babies. Right? He didn't just send one baby. He sent two babies. Yeah. John the Baptist yeah. and Jesus. Yeah. I was doing a study on this and I realized that the similarities of both of them. And they were both born a miracle. They were both given a task to do. They were both fulfilled in scripture. They, were both, they both had disciples. They both had uh, boldness to speak. They both had the Father spoken to them specifically. They both obeyed the Father. They both exalted one another. And they both were killed for righteousness. Amen. So when I looked at it, I was like, man, that was, a, that was powerful. So let's go back to community. Because they were family. They were cousins, right? Again, okay, going back to the original family. Jesus creates a, gr a group of disciples. <coughs> they broke bread together. They prayed together. They lived life together. They saw and performed miracles together. So think about that life. Think about how it must be to live around a God that is creating things right in front of your, in front of your eyes. He can walk on water. He can turn water into wine. Come on. He can turn water into blood. He can remove the water so you can go through it. Amen. Think of the power that he has. He can come the waves. Right. Powerful. Powerful. But again, it's community, it's family, right? Other examples uh, of community in the New Testament. When Martha is mourning for Lazarus, do you remember? When Lazarus died and Jesus is going there, Martha was in community. Remember? It says that when Martha gets up and runs, who follows after her? The community follows after her. This is one powerful thing that I saw again in Scripture that I never saw before. When Jesus says, remove the stone, who removed the stone? It's a heavy stone. Yeah. Who, Jesus didn't remove it. Right. Who did it? The community did it. The community did it. Yeah. And then what happened after he removed that stone? Come out. That's what came out. Yeah. And he spoke to him. Right? But there was community there. Bro. So there was community. It says they were mourning together. Right? They're rejoicing together. Community is very important. New and Old Testament. They go fishing together. Who loves fishing here? Mm. They went fishing together. You know what I hear, hear the, the funny part about this is that they went fishing after they experienced everything with Jesus. They were like, alright, Jesus is dead. So, I'm going to go fishing. <laughs> you know what his friends said? You know what his family said? His disciples said, I'm going on with you. <laughs> bro. They didn't say, no, bro. No, no, Jesus give us a task. We're going to do this task. Peter said, I'm going fishing. Man, I don't know. Fishing. And you know what happens when they went fishing? They had an encounter with God. <clears throat> Why? Because they were together. They were a family. We're going to do this thing together. Amen. So there's always community. Jesus sends his disciples by twos. There's so much overwhelming evidence of community in the Bible. But at the same time, what happens in community, sometimes we do good things in community, sometimes we do bad things in community. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm guilty. So again, them going fishing, was that a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. It's a good thing they were together. But that was not the task that the Lord gave them, right? Right. But they were together. <clears throat> what about us? 
how that has much affected us in community. God follows Jesus. Spirit, community is always available in accountability. That's the good example. The spirit of the living God, community, and accountability. But I want bad. Myself, my thoughts, and my knowledge. <coughs> I remember what, uh, the story where Jesus looks at his people, and he goes, and he looks over Israel, and he weeps. <coughs> and he says, if you only knew the peace that I have. <coughs> he knew that. This is why I came. Amen. <coughs> So we connect with people to create community, right? Just naturally, in general. And sometimes we don't care. As long as we're in community, we don't care because we are so ingrained with community from the beginning, from the Creator, to be in community, not to be by ourselves. So what happens because we're in community, we don't care what we do, as long as we're in community. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call out things that I see wrong in you because that might, that might make you go away. And I'm going to be by myself. And I don't want to be by myself because I was never, in my core, I need people around me. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put up with the stuff that you do because I, I don't want to be alone. At the same time, I'm like, true. We don't really share things. Yeah. Because, yeah. But no, because it might create some conflict, you know? Yeah. And we also do the opposite way. We make up stories so that people will come. Right? Because I don't care what I do. As long as I am with people, I'm good. I'm okay. Right? In the world, we always are looking to be surrounded with people because we feel loved, we feel accepted, and we live a Facebook life where I will only show you things that I like and that I like. Come on. I work for you. Yeah. Come on. Okay. What happens as soon as I don't like you? Come on. Then I gotta find, I gotta find another person that likes me, or I gotta make sure everything that I do so that you can come back so that you can like me. Mm. Why? Because we're creating community. Facebook figured this thing out. Yeah. But what about real life? Right? We do things together in community. We join gangs. We protest. We have bad parenting. We have bad work ethics. We do bad things in community. In fact, the dictionary for gang is a group of criminals who do illegal things together who are friends. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because in gangs, if you're a gang member, you're willing to die for your friends. Yes, right. What kind of love does that have somebody have to do with that? You know, if you have that kind of love, it shows something about yourself. It shows loyalty that you have. And also it says, I don't care what we do together. As long as we're together, I don't care what I'm willing to die for you. You know who else had that? Oh, the disciples. That's right. Come on. The disciples. In games, we do. I don't care what we do. As long as we're together, we can do good things, bad things. Who cares? You know what the disciples did? We're going to die. For what's good. Amen. Because that's because our, our, our example died for what's good. Amen. Amen. Wow. And Amen. we're willing to do this because he told us that this is going to change somebody else's life. That's right. Through his Holy Spirit. Come on. He's the only one that's going to give us this power to go out and do this type of life. Because on ourselves, on our own, we can't do it. What we're going to do on our own is that we're going to try to please people. So that they can believe that my message is real. But what if I'm just real? Come on. And let God be. Amen. Do I have Amen. to please everybody? No. No. Or no. do I just have to speak to yourself? Regardless if you accept them or not. Come Amen. Or we can do that. We can live a Facebook life. <laughs> Disciples. I actually wrote a chart. So I was doing a study on their death. So when you say, as a gang member, I'm willing to die for my, my homie. I'm willing to go all out. This is the kind of homies Jesus had. That's Peter was crucified upside down. Yeah, yeah. And he, he did it because he was unworthy to die like, the, like Christ. Andrew was crucified in the next shape after being uh, whipped severe, severely. And at the cross, he called, I have long desired for this happy hour. Amen. And he continued to preach his stories for two hours until he died. James was thrown from the top of pinnacle, a hundred feet from the temple, for not refusing his faith. And he survived. And they beat him to death in the same pinnacle where Satan took Jesus to tempt him. In John, John, he was boiled in, in oil, tortured, and then poisoned in a mine 
prison and left to death at Patmos. Philip was imprisoned and crucified. Thomas was killed by a spear in a mission trip in India. Matthew was killed by a sword in the back. Bartholomew was skinned alive and beheaded. <clears throat> I actually downloaded these pictures. And, and, and I felt so bad, like, am I that kind of way? Am I this kind of, do you see that? We're going like, yeah, 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 do you see them being skinned alive, bro? This is that kind of way that they will die. It makes me think, am I down for Jesus? Nathaniel, he was whipped to death in a missionary trip in Armenia. Because he refused to sacrifice the sun god in Persia. Simon, he went to Africa and England and was crucified there. Judas hid himself with his stomach open. And Jude was killed with an axe. That's the kind of homie Jesus had. That's what kind of an impact can a man have on you? What kind of power can he put beston upon you for you to actually be able to suffer like that? Wants me to think like that. That he will actually do something like that. That his disciples will want to die like that. It's amazing to see that. So again, that's how they die. So what do we do in order to create community? We have the same interests and goals. We're compatible, because we're compatible people, right? Most common, where do you start community? In sports, right? You would like the Dodgers? I like the Dodgers. <coughs> we hang out, we can be friends, right? Yeah. You like the Raiders? I like the Raiders, I right? I In fact, other people, other people, because they look how they look, and they know that if I just say I like the Raiders, they'll accept me, yeah. you know? We can go to a Raider game, and we can all be cheering about something, and I don't even know what we're cheering about because I don't care about the Raiders. <laughs> Right? It doesn't matter. 
if we disagree, it doesn't matter if we're together. Because yeah. we have a whole deep, bunch of different race uh, against other races because as long as we're together, we're okay. If you're, the, if you're the same race, you go and talk to them, they're cool, they're fine. But as long as you come back over here, they're like, no, 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 we hate you. Why? Because as long as we're together, it doesn't matter we've got community. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, if it's good or bad. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> we grew up in the same neighborhood, right? We belong in the same gang, we belong in the same uh, group. It doesn't matter if we do right things or bad things, as long as we're together, again, community. There are people who have the same sex, same sex attraction. It doesn't matter what other culture says. As long as you and I are good, we'll create whatever things we can do together so that we can stay together in community. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. Why? Because at the core of every one of these type of different scenarios, community is always wanted. Why? Because God's perfect design is for us to have community. Right. It's for not for you to be alone. It is not good for you to be alone. Amen. Amen. But we take that and we go the opposite way. It's not good for me to know to be by myself. I know that's because I feel it in my core, but these people don't accept me, so I've got to create my own people. Because it's not good for me to be alone. I don't care if it's good or bad. As long as I'm community, right. I'm good. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But what about the perfect example of how community should be there? So I'm going to share something with you that I haven't shared with many people. And this is where my heart comes in. This is where my brokenness comes in. I grew up as an atheist. My dad was a biochemist. Um, I was brought up in science all my life. We experimented with animals. We did so many things. Um, so my dad never believed in me. My dad always believed in science. They always be against uh, Christianity, against anything that you can name. And my dad was so high on what he believed that he would call me. It's not like, like oh, I just stay away from it. No, no, my dad was like, come on. Come on. And he would try to convince them. And he did. Anyway. But you know what the, what the most damaging part of us? That when they were coming, he would also say this. Mijo, get away. Look, get the consensus, man. Look how this is done. Mm. And that was me. I grew up with the same mentality. I grew up with that same heart. But at the same time, because I'm so broken, I grew up wanting community. So, when my dad dies when I was 14, my mom leaves me. Right? 15, she goes. So I'm by myself with my brother. At 17, my brother takes off. 17, I'm by myself, completely by myself. And she left us because she believed that, because we were so despiertos, we were so intelligent, because of how we grew up in science. My mom felt the need that, you know what, they can take care of themselves. I can't mourn in this house. I'm going to take off. They can take care of themselves because they're very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. But we were in heart. We were kids. Right. Up here, we know, yeah, we know how to we, we study psychology, one, two, and three levels. But again, in here we were kids. Up here, yeah, we can manipulate people. But in here, we were kids. Amen. So when I was 17, I remember I came to this dark place when I was by myself. And this is my heart, guys. I think I to two people this but I wanted to kill myself. You know what my words were? Specific, I still remember to this day. He <clears throat> said, if I die right here right now, no one would know. No one would know. It's going to pass seven months. No one would know that I'm dead. No one. No one would find me where I'm at. No one. No one would search me. No one. No one. That was my thought. And I remember that. I slept on that. I fell asleep thinking that trying to kill myself. And you know what I woke up thinking? I don't care what I do. I don't care. I'm going to do everything in my power for me not to be alone. Do you know what that mentality is? It's the abandonment syndrome. I don't care who I do, who, who I hang out with. I don't care what I say. I don't care. As long as I'm not by myself. And that's what I did. So I was 27. Your parents thought I was the best kid. 
because I presented that to your parents so that you can think that of me so that I can be with you, so that I will not be alone. The moment that you would say something, that I said something that offend you, I will run to you and say, no, no, look, and I will try to please you as much as I can in order to bring you back because I don't want to be alone. Amen. And that happened with disease. And the Lord slowly revealed that to me. And He let me know that you were never alone. When you wanted to kill yourself, I was there. All this time I've been with you. All those thoughts, I've been with you. Your circumstances never overtake you. You're right there. So again, acceptance and abandonment were at the core of my heart. Every other thing that I did was just the superficial outcome. There's a lot of people in here who have superficial outcomes. But what's at your core? Which is the reason why you do these things. And that's where Satan doesn't want you to go. That's right. He just wants you to tell, you struggle with pornography, you struggle with masturbation, you struggle with greed, you struggle with pride. Yeah, all these things you do. Yeah, yeah, you should repent from those. When God touches your core, something you should repent. Amen, amen. amen. Satan doesn't want you to go to your core. Amen. He wants to hide your core. Because the more he has your core, things will change. They change for a little bit. But then you should do it in the beginning and you always go back and talk. Why am I repenting over the same thing over and over and over again? It's because I'm broken. It's because I'm, I have to, I'm willing to go to the core for things to change. For the Holy Spirit to transform you from the inside out. Rather than you try to stay busy and again try to please people so that you can let them know I'm good inside. Look at all the things that I do, I'm good inside. But at your core, are you? That's what God is asking me. Because I'm here for that. I'm here for your core. <clears throat> so what do you do with the things that you start? After you know how we're compatible? After you know how much things we do? We lie, we hide, we exalt ourselves, we compromise, we hurt people, we make up stories just to create community. And all of those is to just close something off what's in the core. So the important part is, because we went this way, instead of going community with the Lord Jesus Christ, we went in community with whatever we wanted to, a lot of things happened to us. Some people were abused. Some people were hurt, were abandoned because of the brokenness. A lot of circumstances happened to us. And because of those circumstances, we took different routes. We made different decisions than what the Lord wanted for our lives from the beginning. <coughs> which is beautiful community with the body of Christ. But we took it this way. Right? And because of this happened, there was abortions that we were part of. We hurt people, we steal, we cheat, we kill. <coughs> all these things that happened because we went this way. So now, because all these things happen, there's deep scars that we have. There's still tough circumstances that we have. So what are we doing with those cars? What are we doing with the things that we experienced when we were over here? Because the enemy is very good at doing one thing. Using them against you. Amen. Very good at that. Right. When you feel a little bit down, it reminds you why you're down. It reminds you why you did all those things. And why all these blah, 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 blah. Sort of like a knife. This is actually called a survival knife. It has like a package and it's got like a whole bunch of things in there for you to survive. Survival knife. But what the enemy uses is that. Your circumstances. Everything your scars. And remember, he doesn't create the scar. He just touches the wind. Right? Circumstances produce your scar. But what you do with it. The enemy comes and he pokes you. See what you did? See? So that. And you did this and this and this. And he pokes you, pokes you, pokes you, pokes you. The same spot. And you just take it. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see that. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, man, I'm such a scumbag. Man, I'm a piece of this. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, you know what? And it gets you too far this way. 
Pouvez-vous essayer de nous Ça va être mal. The second stuff that we do is we stuff it into any Bible. We hide. Because we don't want to tell anybody what happened to us. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. It's bad. I don't think, I don't even think there's a person here that did what I did. I'm bad. So we stuff it. <clears throat> and the third thing that we can do is we give it to the Lord. Yeah. You know how hard it is that is? Because yeah. it's easy to hide. It's easy to just take the abuse of the enemy. But to give it away? Mm. The Bible says that too much you give it, much is required. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what is required for you? To actually put that into practice. Too much giving. That's what is required. The moment you took a hold of it, it no longer belongs to you. It belongs to somebody else. You gave it away, and the other person owns it now. It's no longer yours. That weapon cannot be used against me because I have surrendered. Now he has the power to do whatever he wants with that. Right? I gave it away. But then the moment that he grabbed it, it no longer belongs to me. It belongs to somebody else. But if I only offer it, nobody grabs it, it still belongs to me. So somebody grabs it. That's when it changes owners. What are you doing with your pain? Are you still holding on to it? Are you stuffing it? It's important to know this. Again, this is a core issue. This is not kind of superficial. We're talking core here. What are we doing with our pains? What are we doing with our scars? Because they happen, absolutely. We got a lot of that to happen, absolutely. However, there's, there's a purpose for it. What are you doing with that? Because when you give it to the Lord, you know what happens? The enemy comes and pokes you. But in time, because you surrender to the Lord and he actually transforms you, helps you more and more and more, you know what those po pokes turn to? <laughs> Why are you laughing, guys? This is supposed to make you feel bad. These are your hurts. These are your pains. Why are you laughing? You're supposed to hurt me now. <laughs> What's happening now? You know what happened? It lost its power. Amen. Come on. Right? Why? Because somebody turned it into something better. You know what you can do with this? If you give it to the Lord, the Lord uses your scars, uses your pain, and uses it to heal other people. Amen. Come on. It's a purpose in your scars. It's a purpose in your pain. It's never been for you to go through that for nothing. You are loved so much. You went through so much, man. Because somebody else goes through so much. And he feels that without the Lord, there's no way that I can take on this pain. You know what the number one thing? I'm part of a chaplain. You know what the, part, the biggest thing of suicidal is? You know what it is? I'm done because there's no way that I can come back from this. And no one's here for me. I'm by myself. Money can't do that. Cars can do that. Women can do that. Only the Lord can do that. Right. Well, who are you using your pain to? How is he using your pain? How is he using your scars? Because this is powerful. Believe it or not. Allowing the Lord to take over that. And the Lord using that for somebody else. It's a powerful statement. <laughs> but again, going back to community. What community are you surrounded by? <coughs> because in order to put this into action, we need the Holy Spirit, we need community, <coughs> and we need accountability. Three major things in Christianity. And usually when you go this route, it's because you don't have them. And you don't have the Spirit, who cares? We're in community, we can do whatever we want. And here, I don't have accountability. No one's going to know about this. And in community, Oh, I just come in and nap. No one is ever going to notice that I'm here. Because I can hide very easily. But what happens when someone calls you and says, You know what? I miss your church, man. I haven't seen you. How are you, man? <clears throat> they notice. If, if somebody's not seeing you that you're missed, then you, you don't have community. Don't say, Yeah, I go, I go over here. If, they, if, if, if over here doesn't know you're not there, that's not community. Okay? Because you're not missed. You don't know. If you don't have somebody that. When he sees your face, he says, Nah, you're going through something, man. 
You're going through something. Right. How does he know? Yeah. Because he's been there. He's not a Facebook. We've been here together for years, man. I know something's going on. Because I know you. I know you, man. I miss you and I love you. And you know I love you. That's why I'm bringing this up. It's not for me to judge you. No, you have the same authority over me. It's because I love you. That's why we're doing this. And the Holy Spirit is the most powerful thing. Because it's the only one who cares. Amen. It's completion. Yes. So again, who are you giving your scars to? In John 20, 24, Jesus says to Thomas, touch my scars. Mm. Touch them, man. Amen. Feel them. Come on. You know what he's saying there? Use this. And to this day, we do. God sent him for those cars to die for our sins so that we and I can be free because of his faithful love and overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit. He's telling you and I, when he died on the cross, was not in vain. You know why I died? Because I love you so much. Amen. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. So we'll believe in him, never first, but have everlasting life. For I did not come into this world to condemn the world, but to save them. You know how powerful that is? There was, a, there was a result of his pain. There was, a, there, was, there was a beautiful result of his pain. Don't waste your pain, guys. There was purpose in your pain. So Jesus didn't come to remove pain. He came to bring hope in the midst of pain. Let's close our eyes. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord. As tough as this is, Father God, you did the toughest. And we are here as your children, Father God, planting seeds, Lord, to core issues that are going on in our lives, Lord, because we know that your healing is much better than our own understanding, Lord. We are here, Father God, as your children, Lord, to submit to your will, Father God. You don't call us to be comfortable. You call us to die. You call us to follow you in your ways, in your will, as hard as it is, for obedience, Lord, so that your purpose may be fulfilled in our life, Lord. So as we are here, Father God, as your children, Father God, I pray for every each individual here, Lord. Today, it's no coincidence you're here. Today you're here because God brought you here. If any of the things that God used to reveal today in your heart move that decision that you were thinking of, have this in your thought. It's because He knows. It's because He's working. And it's because He loves you. He loves you so, so much that He knew, He knew exactly what you were going through. And that's why He brought you here. If there's anybody here who has not started this journey with the Lord, this beautiful and amazing journey, you may not know what it looks like, you may not even know what, but something happened to you today. We're going to be quiet for a minute. And this is your time to speak. Oh my God! Thank you.
Come on, let's do it.